Hi, and welcome to A Cup of Tea with Stephen. And joining me today, well, let me just say, they say the pen is mightier than the sword, and this woman has fought her way through the British school system. Uh, she's become a number one author in the United Kingdom and has just risen in the charts in the US. I'd like to welcome Samantha Lee Harrow. How are you? Oh, hi, Stephen. I'm good, thank you. How are you doing? I'm great, thank you. I, mean, I just can't wait to chat to you. You have a new book out called The House of Killers, and I understand it's not a bit of vegan, is it? <laughs> no, it isn't. <laughs> no. Oh, no, The House of Killers is the first part of a trilogy, and um, it's basically, if you take Killing Eve and you mix it with Jason Bourne, um, that's kind of a kicking off point for the story. It's not, of course, either of those things. It's a completely original story, and um, and it's about an assassin called Neva who suddenly becomes very self-aware. Um, she works for this, um, well, huge conglomerate called The Network. Um, who trained her from a childhood to become a killer. Okay. And uh, there's also this MI5 agent in there as well, um, who is on her tail. So that's roughly is the start of the book. So I'm going to ask you, you know, whenever I sit and watch Bond Identity or James Bond, how do you write a car chase? <laughs> well, I know, I know exactly what you're saying there. I like that, and I can't think, oh, and he went round the corner fast. So how do you do that? <laughs> Well, it's a funny old thing. When I'm writing, I actually see it like a movie in my head. So basically what I do is I have these pictures in the back of my head. This is what I want to show. This is the scene I want to show. And I think about the senses as well. So I'm thinking about what would you hear? What would you, what would you see? Um, you know, what would you touch? You know, the usual, the five senses. Yeah. Uh, but I'm actually... I'm just translating that imaginary picture from out of my head onto the yeah. page, really. So I'll do it blow by blow, detail by detail as I see it. Now, what made you go into writing? I know you were teaching, but what made you go into writing? Well, I started writing at a very young age. I was 11 years old after reading my very first adult fiction book, which was called The, John Cle uh, the Collector by John Fowles. Yeah. And um, that was a thriller, a very intense thriller. And I remember closing the pages of the last of the book as I, I read the last pages and thinking, wow, I want to be a writer. I'm yeah. going to be a writer. And, and that was the that was this moment of light bulb going on above my head. And after that, I was always writing, always writing stories, always ambitious to become a writer. I didn't know what it was at the time, but it was actually fan fiction. And I used to write Dracula fan fiction as a child. <laughs> Everything was Christopher Lee, because uh, <laughs> I used to watch all the Hammer movies. <laughs> you not terrified as a child? No, I used to love them. I, I just loved horror. <laughs> I used to stay up late at night with my sister, wow. watching all these horrible films. <laughs> your, your last book, Stranger in a Bed, right? Uh, it, it went yes. one all over the place, and it still is at the top of the charts in many places. I understand it's being made into a film. It is, and that's been very exciting. I mean, last year was a kind of bittersweet year for us all, obviously, with the constant lockdowns, the state of the world. However, I was just very lucky that um, Terry Dwyer, producer of uh, Buffalo Dragon, discovered yeah, my book and decided she was going to make a film of it. Yes, yeah, so very exciting. Who have got, who's starring in the film? Uh, there's going to be Samantha Bond, who oh. plays my character Isadora. Um, there is Emily Barrington. People might know her from Humans, uh, being one of her latest things. Yeah. Um, her husband, Ben Lloyd Hughes. Um, Joseph Marcel, uh, people will probably know him from Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. Yeah. And uh, of course, Nina Wadia. My so God, some gr must, great line you must be You must be just over the moon if that's your first film. I mean, <laughs> it's so, so well done. Are you leaping up and down? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I really was. I was... I, when I heard the cast list, I was just absolutely blown away because it just couldn't be any better. Now, I know you're happily married to, to a lovely man, but who would you fantasise about being a stranger in your bed? <laughs> now, my husband knows about this one. My <laughs> husband will let you off. off. Hmm. Well, there's, there's two, but one of them I wouldn't like to say because I feel a bit of a cougar, really. <laughs> but, um, well, actually, I will say after that, you can't say that and then not tell everybody who you mean. Of course, Reggie Jean, who plays uh, the Duke in Bridgerton, um, he's got 
all of the women um absolutely mm -hmm. fantasizing about him now <laughs> he's gorgeous and but my absolute favorite is alexander skarsgård tall blonde yeah. blue-eyed what's not to like <laughs> <laughs> do you are you find yourself when you're writing books now uh thinking about them as television projects or film projects as you're writing them or um do you think about that afterwards actually i do they they are they're just movies to me in my head and i know really write very visually so for me they they all transpose easily to film i think especially the house of killers i really really i've i've been tweeting that i think reggie jean should become michael my mi5 agent <laughs> <laughs> it's not taking me up on it yet <laughs> <laughs> you know, a lot of your a lot of your books are around, you know, crimes and and you know all all sorts of bits and pieces. But you know, if you had a chance, and I've always thought this myself, uh, of getting away with it and committing one Quentin Crisp always said glamorous crime, what crime would you commit? Oh, oh yeah. Do you know there's lots because I think a lot. obviously don't know, there's lots I'd want to do if I thought <laughs> I wouldn't do it. But you know, that I think I think probably being a cat burglar, although physically I'm definitely not up to the job, would be very glamorous. <laughs> <laughs> if you had a chance to sit the younger you down, say like 14, 15, and have a chat with her, what advice would you hmm. give her? I think I would tell her not to get married to her first husband. <laughs> <laughs> The only trouble is I wouldn't then have my lovely daughter, so it would be a bit of a, you know, I'd have to weigh that one up. <laughs> and what about business-wise, you know, about writing, going into writing, would you uh, would you tell your younger self, uh, starting out in the career, uh, give, them, give some advice uh, about writing? I would say go for it sooner. Right. you know what to do you know i would give them the ins of, of how to do it and go for it sooner because i i do feel i've come to it all in a way the success side although i have been writing since 2007 professionally it does feel like um it's taking me a long time to get there and you know and i'm it, age is catching up with me if you know what i mean <laughs> i know you're like me you're very impatient uh, i want everything done tomorrow uh, and I know you yes. published books that probably would have been published easier uh, if you'd waited a bit longer. But uh, how did you find self-publishing for yourself? Was it something you would recommend to people or is it something you would avoid? I did my very first book. I self-published it and I didn't intend to. It, what happened was I'd written it for my master's degree dissertation in creative writing. I knew I had this beautiful book that everybody was raving about, that I'd got a great, you know, um, sort of a great degree from and I started sending it around and I didn't know any better and then a, a self-publishing company I didn't realize I sent it I thought they were a proper publisher I was very naive then um and it wasn't a bad thing for me in the end because I self-published but it then won this award in America because it's independent publishers award called um the forward magazine book of the year award it won the silver for yes. best horror novel and I did get my three book deal on that. I mean, I think I wouldn't self-publish personally because you've got nobody behind you. You've got you know, one of the wonderful things about having Harper Collins behind me now is that you just feel so supported. They yeah. do so much for you to help get the word out. Yeah. And that when you're out on your own is very challenging. Yeah. A lot of your books are taking you things personally to yourself, don't they? I mean, you, you've used your own personal experience. Strange on a Bed deals yes. with, with something they were only coming to terms with recently and talking about emotional abuse. We all know about physical, yes. physical abuse and we know uh, now now it's okay that emotional abuse is so wrong. What advice would you give to people that are in that situation uh, to talk about uh, emotional abuse? What, what advice would you give them? Very, very, very difficult when you find yourself in a relationship where you are being manipulated, you're being treated as though you're always the wrong person. And at first, it's very hard to see the wood for the trees that this is what this person is doing to you and they're gaslighting you in some way as well. But I think once the dawning of that happens, you should definitely start talking about it. Talk to your friends, talk to family, get out there and get away. Get away as soon as you can, if you can. I know that's not easy. Strangely, you're better but it's it's partly based on your own experience from your uh, from from your own abuse sort of relationship. Was it when I right was thinking that? Well, my ex-husband was very controlling, but it, I didn't really. This book wasn't written and based on my what what happened to me, mm. but on somebody else. But I used, I definitely used how that felt. Um, 
And there was a time he actually had me followed by private detectives as well, which is, I did use that within the book because I had to show how Charlotte felt about being spied on all the time, being watched, you know, being accused of things that you haven't done. And, um, and I think it's just one of those things that um, nepotistic and, yeah. you know, sociopathic characters of that personality do use you know they, they, they won't stop at anything if they want to control you and it and it is it's a horrible situation to be in um, and I was happy to use those experiences though to write something that I felt was very true into the heart. What do you find Sam when you're looking in the papers and you see a story like that and look at the man they're accusing you think that that could be anyone that could be you know husband yeah. uh, and it happens to so many people much more than what, what, yeah, it what does about it. Then, it oh, happens to men and women, not oh, just women. Oh, it happens to everybody. Yeah, and, yeah. and you know, it's, it's awful that one person feels that they have to control somebody else's life to that degree. It's horrifying. Yeah. And it says a lot about them, not about the person who's being oh, controlled, they're, they're really. They're just suffering themselves. But, you know, yeah. <laughs> you know, so they're all saying that, but in reality, <laughs> you're the one hurting. But listen, let's on, on a brighter moment. Uh, what is the proudest moment of your life? I think... One of the most exciting moments, oh, there's so many, this year has been such a roller coaster for me. Certainly when I got the USA Today bestseller um, email from my, um, from her colleagues telling me I'd got that, I just couldn't believe it. Um, and I really was very proud. Um, but also standing on the set in November last year when they were filming and I was watching one of the scenes being filmed from a monitor outside of one of the bedrooms yeah. in this big manor house and I turned around and I looked at my husband and I went that's my film and it was this <laughs> moment of oh my goodness I cannot believe it that's my film and I don't ever remember feeling like so in the moment or so so proud uh, and usually you, you do these things reflectively, but at that moment it dawned on me what a big thing this was and how important it was to my career in the future. And just, it was just an amazing moment. <laughs> the, ability, the, the one thing about your writing uh, is you're pulled into the story almost right away, even though nothing's really happened. Somehow or other on the first page, you, you, you know this character and you want to, and it's a, a, it's a great ability you have there. But listen, what advice have you got for other, you. Writers, other writers? Going into, I mean, I, 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 people always say I'd like to write write a book, and I bumped into them five years later, and they're still in the first chapter. Well, I think I think it's obviously not everybody can do it. Everyone thinks that they've got a book in them, but if you really, really believe, like I did at eleven years old, that you can be a writer, then I think you just have to keep practicing that skill. It's like you can't go to the gym and start picking up massive weights first first off, <laughs> right? So don't attempt to don't attempt a book first off. Try a short story finish it and always finish what everything you write you know yeah. don't give up it takes a lot of stamina writing a book um i i'm very lucky that i can do it and work on it all day long but even if you can't and you've got a full-time job do a few hundred words a night even if it's a hundred words soon and soon you'll soon build it up and you'll get better and faster yeah as soon, time goes soon on. adds up doesn't it if you've done a couple of hundred and a few more of the weekend and you get into it i think the more it builds the more you want to write it don't you that's right, absolutely. And I think you, you've, there's a certain amount of warming your brain up too as well. And the opening chapters, you often rewrite those a lot because they're the, they're the start. They're getting you into the, you know, into the mood, into the story, into the characters. You're learning about the characters at those points. Now, you're a huge Doctor Who fan. Is that correct? Yes. Well, my husband is. I do like Doctor Who, but he's, he's the fan. <laughs> you could dress up as a, as a Doctor Who character for him then. I never do, <laughs> but, but <laughs> and now they just say we don't do the cosplay. Um, but I have, you know, I've worn a few steampunky, steampunky sort of um, Doctor Who outfits in my time. <laughs> uh, so you've actually written for the Doctor Who uh, franchise, haven't you? Yes, we have. Um, we, uh, David and I both wrote um, a book that was called um, The White Witch of Devil's End. Yeah. Um, well, actually, it was, it's become a novella now or a novel now, a novelisation, but it was actually a screenplay play originally yeah. and it went to DVD and it's become a, a, 
five, is it five or six part? Do you know, I should know that. Isn't that awful? I moved on. <laughs> this is a six part drama. <laughs> <laughs> Too many things I've written now. I forget half of it. <laughs> now listen, if you get, you know, you know someone, so many wonderful, ta- so much talent out there. Who would you like to write for, actor or actress? Give oh, oh, yeah, there's lots, there's lots. I would actually like to see Alexander Skarsgård in something of mine because I think he is a fantastic actor. I loved him in um, the, I think it's Pretty Little Liars. Or yeah. Pretty Big, Pretty Big Lies it was um, that he was in. He was great in that. True Blood? True Blood. Oh, yes, of course. I forgot he was Eric in True Blood. Of course, yeah. I, I, was, yeah. I, I was a junkie for that. I couldn't put that oh, in. Oh, fantastic. Amazing in it. Uh, absolutely amazing. And what actress would you like to write for? Actress? Mm. I really like Scarlett Johansson, you know. I think I'm, I'm really aiming high, aren't I, here? <laughs> well, so the, I mean, the way you're going, I mean, it's, it's only, you're only an hour away from being in, the, say, Beverly Hills. Um, but uh, no, Scarlett Johansson was on RuPaul Drag Race US uh, last week. Oh, was she? It was, it was great fun. Yeah, really good fun. Oh, like a real I one. love her. I think she's amazing. I think she's really talented you and beautiful. To, you go out to LA occasionally, don't you? Yes, we used to, I mean, in better times, we used to go um, every February and hoping to go again next February for big Doctor Who convention called Gala Free One. Um, so we've, uh, we're hoping to go again in Feb, looking at flights today for that, actually. <laughs> so I'm feeling optimistic about next year. <laughs> so it's nice weather. Sam, t- tell me, tell everybody a little bit how to get hold of House of Killer uh a killer sorry uh and and your other other projects how can they get hold of them uh well you can go on my website and um which is www.samanthaleehow.co.uk and see what all of my books are because I, I also do some horror and fantasy under the name sam stone as well um and so house of killers it's available all good retail stores, online stores, anywhere actually. Just um, you know, pop onto Amazon or you know, preferably your favorite bookstore, and you can pre-order it. It is available at the moment in ebook, and it will be out um, in June twenty fourth um, in paperback in, and also in audio, which will be great. And so will Stranger in Our Bed be out on audio on the twenty fourth as well. So oh, that's good. all very exciting. Absolutely terrific. Well, listen, Sam, thank you ever so much for having a cup of tea with me. <laughs> and I look forward to catching up with you again soon. Thanks ever so much. Maybe we'll have a glass of wine next time. Thank you.